Some words on the uh, Cup of Excellence, which has been around since uh, 1999, uh, co-founded by myself and, uh, and Susie Spindler, whose uh, efforts and organizational skills at getting it at auction uh, and all the bureaucracy that that involved and actually sending samples out and everything else are due entirely to, to her brilliance. And I do mean brilliance. Um, the role that I played uh, here was in developing and conceiving the idea of an international competition. Uh, I had been in Brazil for two years working for the United Nations as part of what they call the Gourmet Project to produce higher quality coffees out of Brazil and thus obtain higher prices from this burgeoning specialty market. Uh, so. Um, with that in mind, uh, after two years being told that the project was about to end, I was desperate to find some way to actually have that happen. In fact, I had sent really very fine samples, including the number one prize winning Ely Cafe coffee um, uh, from their yearly internal competition available to all Brazilian coffee farmers. Uh, I'd sent that sample plus two others to roasters and importers around the, uh, around the uh, United States. Uh, big names in both ends, all specialty coffee and had received back yawns uh, and very little interest. If there was any, it would be saying, yeah, the, the Brazilian sent me, all three of them were better than the Brazil I have, but not 25 cents better. They were the, the a statement that still rings in my ears today and that I find is outrageous now as I do, as I did then. Um, later we would have, uh, we would do another cupping with 11 roasters. This happened twice in California where I brought those three samples that I had sent and we cupped those blind against those 11 roasters Brazilian samples. My samples came out first, second, and third, uh, and that's when we saw the tide turn, uh, with suddenly people being very enthusiastic and realizing uh, how much better uh, the Brazil could actually be. I think I learned from that that there is a crowd psychology, um, that instead of being an individual, you're working hard, you're cupping right now, you've been roasting, you're in production, and here you're trying a sample, doesn't fit what you're used to, okay, no big deal. That's not what happens when you have 10 or 11 roasters or any number, all cupping together and having consensus over quality. Uh, suddenly, there's a new energy in the room I think that was part of what brought to mind the idea of having an international competition where uh, roasters, buyers of coffee would come to, uh, would come to Brazil uh, from Asia, from Europe, from the United States uh, to, to actually cup the best, the best lots that coffee farmers had to offer. And uh, that's, uh, that's the way uh, Cup of Excellence was born in 1999. Uh, approximately 20 uh, jurists from around the country uh, for, and the world actually came together, uh, came to this middle of nowhere uh, university, uh, five hours drive from the Sao Paulo airport, uh, and Cup for five days what I and, uh, and a Brazilian national jury had selected as the best from amongst 350 farm lot samples. And um, after, at the end of those five days, uh, scoring those coffees, only 10 were left. But the enthusiasm of those 20, uh, of those 20 cuppers was through the roof. Uh, we had one person who had been buying uh, Brazils for decades, uh, an older person, very experienced in Brazils, who uh, was on the jury, who said he had never cupped Brazils of that caliber uh, or been in a room with that many great Brazils uh, in his entire life. 
so there was a celebratory discovery feeling that did not normally exist in specialty coffee, to my mind, in my experience, until that moment. Uh, and that was to be repeated with many Cup of Excellences afterwards. Uh, the criteria which we used in Cup of Excellence was very specific. Two key factors, clean cup and sweetness. Sweetness equals ripeness of coffee. Clean cup, the processing. The, the craftsmanship of the farmer or miller to actually bring out everything that that coffee has without in any way harming the flavor or adding to the flavor by excess fermentation or other means. That was the key to Cup of Excellence then, something which today I feel has been lost to, uh, to other factors, uh, which I can bring up a little bit later. Uh, but in any case, the question then became, out of these winners, uh, how do you pick between uh, one juror who wanted to buy it on the spot and another juror who wanted to buy it on the spot? And that's how I came up with the idea of an auction, an international uh, uh, internet auction. And uh, that's what we did with the help of the uh, SCAA uh, website at the time. Uh, a month and a half later, it went on auction and uh, achieved 35% better than the market price for Brazils. Given that the fact that the Brazil lots were 50 to 150 bags each, uh, that was absolutely extraordinary. Um, later, uh, year after year, what we found was that the lots diminished in size, down to typically 10, 15 bags, obtaining higher prices that way, um, but allowing smaller farmers to enter into the competition as well, um, and also allowing smaller roasters to be able to afford to buy uh, these, those lots, as opposed to 50 to, 100, to 150 bags. So that made for, um, uh, for a really revolutionary change. Uh, it also meant that at the end of the five days of cupping, uh, roasters, buyers, uh, would be able to spend the weekend actually going to the winning farms and meeting the farmers. And I feel that that's when Third Wave uh, was really born. Our emphasis on light roasting, you know, all those samples, was key. Uh, and uh, and also the fact that now it was single farmers or co-ops being singled out as opposed to the concept of blending where the roaster takes all the glory and all the credit and the farmer remains anonymous. So Cup of Excellence uh, went on from there to, uh, to Guatemala a year later when they contacted us, and then to Nicaragua, and the rest is history. And today they are involved with eight or nine different countries from around the world um, I do feel, to come back to a theme I brought up earlier, that Cup of Excellence has also changed over time, uh, becoming more something where you voted for your favorite coffee, uh, as opposed to being very strict in the criteria that is used. Uh, again, it's about clean cup and sweetness, uh, not about flavoring the coffee with extrinsic elements uh, coming from, uh, for instance, the fruitiness, strong fruity notes that come from the actual fermentation of the mucilage and the fruit onto the bean. That's another competition and it should not be included in what was Cup of Excellence. Cup of Excellence was really about uh, bringing out the terroir in coffee, something that can often be subtle and complex uh, and that is immediately overwhelmed by the fruitiness of a coffee which is like a heavy sauce that's being added. If you like ketchup, have a competition for hamburgers and ketchup. Uh, but please, if you want to find the best hamburger, do not add ketchup to it. And I would say the same thing uh, with Cup of Excellence. So that's the answer. Long one.